Mitsuru Kirijo is waifu material. As part of the Empress Arcana, this Crimson Beauty is the student council president of Gekko Kanhai and a core founder of the season in Persona 3. With that, here are my reasons why Mitsuru Kirijo is waifu material. Starting with her appearance, Mitsuru is certainly beautiful with soft eyes and a gentle smile to match. She stands at a tall 5'5", making her the tallest girl in the group. I would say a notable part of Mitsuru is her long crimson red hair, which often covers her left eye. Right now, her hair is mostly straight with a bit of a curl, but when she was younger, she had curls that would rival Kasane Teto. Mitsuru admits that she's not as interested about fashion as Yukari. Well, I do kind of want to try this pink one. Hmm. <laughs> not that I'd be able to pull it off. I'm not like Takeba. I don't follow fashion myself. I usually just wear whatever the family stylist selects for me. I would say that her family stylist is doing a great job as Mitsuru's attire is always on point. She generally wears the standard school uniform but without the jacket, consisting of a black skirt and long sleeved white blouse all tied together with a big red bow. All of this really helps to emphasize how Mitsuru has a huge pair of boots on her, way bigger than Yukari's. <laughs> Mitsuru can be seen in a variety of other outfits, including her fluffy white coat when she appeared in Persona 4 Arena, and don't forget her white swimsuit when they were at the beach together, transforming her into a stunning beauty, capable of turning heads, even Akihiko. Well, maybe not Makoto. Despite literally having an army of personal maids, I have to admit that like Yukari, Mitsuru looks really cute in a maid outfit herself. By now, you've probably noticed that Mitsuru comes from a very affluent family. You can probably guess this by all the expensive furniture in her room and the army of servants at her beckon. Oh, and she speaks French too. Say magnifique, indeed. This is all possible as she's the sole heir to the Kirijo group, a multinational trading company involved in every aspect of daily life. In Persona 3, you would struggle to find anyone that has never heard of the Kirijo group. Accompanying this environment is a sheltered childhood and an unusual upbringing. We learn through Mitsuru's social link just how different she is from us. It starts off with Makoto bringing her to a ramen shop, where she's unsure about the proper etiquette and starts asking unusual questions to the chef. In the next date, we bring her to a fast food place where you have to eat with your hands, and she's baffled by how they can sell food at such cheap prices, desperately trying to figure out their average cost per unit. Mitsuru also tries takoyaki street food for the first time and is blown away by just how cheap it actually is. Now this last one really surprised me, turns out Mitsuru's never watched an actual movie at the theaters. Switching gears, the latter half of her social link segment is a bit different. During the main story, her father dies from a gunshot wound, leaving Mitsuru to inherit the company and run it all by herself. An enormous burden for a soon to graduate high schooler. Just a quick side note, something really sad is that turns out her father hid a special wine bottle dated on the day Mitsuru was born, designated to only be opened on her upcoming 18th birthday. Going back, Mitsuru expressed her fears of not getting to attend college nor pursuing a profession of her own. To top it all off, Mitsuru reveals that she's actually assigned to an arranged marriage. This is the guy. Although tall, well dressed, and rich, this guy's as pompous as they come, having the nerve to tell us to know our place. This enrages Mitsuru, where she totally wrecks the guy, not caring about the benefits he brings to her company anymore, and slips out that she only wants to be with us. That's quite a way to confess to somebody in public. Mitsuru later confirms that she meant it all, and proclaims that she's gonna start calling us by her first name, which is a huge step relationship wise in Japan. Speaking of marriage, she asks us about where we think she'll be in 10 years. Well, let's just say her look says it all. Well, I suppose that could happen. If you think so, then it could be possible. Early in the story, Mitsuru is in charge of handling the party's bow navigation duties. Compared to Fuka, Mitsuru possesses an inferior version of the clairvoyance skill, which explains the need for special equipment made by the Kirijo group. Once Fuka became the official navigator, Mitsuru could finally join the front lines and she can really hold her own. Some may even say she has a fighting spirit similar to Akihiko. She mainly wields a rapier as her weapon and an evoker to channel her deadly ice skills through her persona. By the way, those evokers were also custom made by the Kirijo group. They make everything. In the popular YouTube series Death Battle, Mitsuru was featured to fight a fellow Ice Queen, Wai Shni from the Ruby series. This battle truly showed off Mitsuru's fighting ability and strategic mind. Her natural resistance to ice allowed her to shrug off most attacks, while her clairvoyant skill helped her anticipate her opponent, thus making her the true Ice Queen. The winner is Mitsuru Kirijo. Now if only she can stop casting Marin Karen for the love of Mitsuru's strategic and analytical mindset allows her to get the team out of tough situations. However, her habit of analyzing everything even carries over to Persona 3 Dancing, where she loves analyzing everyone so that she can improve her own dance. Sorry, just ignore me. I'm here to analyze everyone's dancing styles and moves. She's also quite generous with her feedback. Her moves aren't fancy, but they're steady and solid, so her routine provides comfort. For you, Akihiko, your splendid footwork and weight shifting showcase your fitness. 
and when she's pressed for answers, it's funny how she quickly delegates tough questions to us. Yours? Well, what do you think? How about me, senpai? Uh, what part of my dancing blew you away? Does senpai not really care about me at all? No, I just wanted to give our leader the opportunity to contribute his own thoughts. What backflip? Wait, you weren't watching me at all, were you? In terms of dancing style, I'd describe it as efficient. A graceful mix of ballroom dancing with some urban flair. She goes from one pose to another, avoiding any unnecessary movements. Then at other times, she makes these amazing ballerina-like jumps. Shinji definitely saw that. Um, Mitsuru-senpai? I think your dance is full of personality and charm, too. It's elegant and refined, with the air of dignity. It gives me the impression of an ideal woman. As mentioned by her, Mitsuru's dancing outfit is quite bold. Am I overthinking this, or are some of these outfits too audacious? Not enough. Wearing skin-tight black pants, she wears an open white blouse, accompanied by shiny red short jacket and magenta gloves. Finishing her high school years as a valedictorian and student council president, you can tell she's a high achiever. Plus, she's a great shot. <laughs> All this comes from her natural talent and charisma for leadership. I've always thought you're both so level-headed, so reliable. Tsuru senpai, I'd say you're the type to lead with your charisma. While she did assign Makoto to be the field team leader, we all know that everyone still takes orders from Mitsuru. Naturally, her authoritative nature makes her a bit of a neat freak, like that time she reported that someone broke into Junpei's room, when in reality, that's how a normal boy's room would be. My room always looks like this. W what? B but you can't possibly live here in this state, can you? I think this case is closed. May I return to my duties, Miss Kirijo? I'm sorry you had to see something so disgraceful. Despite her eagerness to enforce the rules, Mitsuru does have a bit of a rebellious side. Whoops, I've gotten used to walking around without my bathrobe lately. Well, I'm not at home, so I suppose being a little lax won't hurt. During the ending scene, as she gives out her valedictorian speech, she had the gusto to leave right in the middle of it in order to fulfill a certain promise. Another one of her more subtle ways of rebelling is the fact that she owns her very own motorcycle. Wow. This particular motorcycle is specially built to function during the dark hour. A few minutes later. Lassie, I almost forgot to talk about her status as an executioner. Oh dear, it's going to be quite difficult to reverse that image of me, isn't it? Mitsuru is infamous for using this as a threat. When I find out who did this, I'll see to it that he or she is executed. During the hot spring scene, even Akihiko is worried about getting caught by her. It's pretty hilarious watching Mitsuru get upset, like that time we asked about her measurements. Who wrote this disgusting question? They must be executed! And when we swept her off her feet. I didn't say a word about practicing it on me! Where are you touching me? Put me down at once! Please put me down! You fool! If you don't hurry and put me down, I'll execute you! So what do you think about Mitsuru? Would you try bringing her to your favorite food place? Did she cast Marin Karen on you? Be sure to leave a like and comment about Mitsuru Kirijo, our favorite bike riding student president.